Diving into Voron 3D printers this past year has been way more fun and way more rewarding than I ever could have imagined. From the machines to exploring Clipper firmware and the friends I've made along the way in the community, it has been a great experience. The two V0.1s that I built last year have been very small but mighty workhorses. And after my positive experience with those two machines, I began looking way more heavily into the other Voron printers. This is when I came across the Switchwire, a very unique bed slinger using a Core XZ motion system. Compared to the many other i3 style printers or bed slingers that I've used over the years, this looked like a major step up. I ended up building the LDO Switchwire kit on live streams over on the Modbot Army channel over the course of a month. In today's video, we are going to dive into the specifics of the Voron Switchwire. We'll go over its specs, what the build was like, what my thoughts are based off the time I've had with it so far, as well as my future plans for this machine. I am really excited to show off this printer and shine some light on what I feel is a slightly underrated Voron. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Huge thank you to LDO and Fabrico for sponsoring the Switchwire kit for this build. Fabrico is an official partner of LDO based here in the US and very active in the Voron community. They carry a wide variety of printer kits, mods, and materials, and are always adding new items to their catalog. If you're interested in picking up an LDO kit or getting some upgrades for your 3D printer, I will have links in the description to their website where you can do so. Released in late 2020, the Voron Switchwire is currently the only Voron printer that is not a Core XY. Instead, it is a Core XZ, which works similar to a Core XY, but instead of having the two motors that control the X and Y axis, you have two motors that work together to control the X and Z axis. This belted motion system is quite unique and allows for very quick travels in the X and Z axis, as well as very quick Z hopping. Just like with a standard belted Z axis, this helps to get rid of any of the Z wobble or Z artifacts that you might get from using traditional lead screws. To keep the head of the printer from crashing into the bed when powered off, there is a key back used, which is a pretty clever solution and it's worked really well for me. The bed does move back and forth in the Y axis in a similar fashion to any other i3 style printer. The bed is actually the exact same style of bed used on the Prusa Mark III or Mark III S Plus, which is a high quality heated bed that's a PCB that has embedded magnets allowing you to use a flex plate system. The LDO kit comes with a custom Voron version with a powder coated PEI bed for it. X, Y, and Z axis all use linear rails, which make them very stiff and precise. The frame is made up of a combination of 2020, 3030, and 3060 extrusions, so it is very rigid. All the electronics are under the machine, and thanks to the honeycomb design in the skirts and an electronics fan, it keeps everything nice and cool. This makes it an ideal printer to enclose and use for printing with materials like ABS. The LDO kit comes with acrylic panels for the front portion of the enclosure, and it uses ACM panels for the back. The kit comes with a Dragonfly hot end and all the parts needed for the Clockwork 1 and the Afterburner, which is the way I assembled it. Now that the Stealth Burner and the Clockwork 2 was just announced to be out of beta, I do have plans to upgrade this in the near future. The build volume is 250 millimeters in the X, just shy of 240 in the Y, and 240 in the Z. The kit came with a mini 12864 display, and there are two LED strips as well as a breakout board for them to add lights inside of the enclosure. For the rest of the electronics, a Pi 3, SKR Mini V2, 350 watt Meanwell power supply for the printer, and a separate 5 volt Meanwell power supply for the Pi were included. The motors are of course from LDO. Like with any of the Vorons, the printers are open source. You have the option to either self-source all the parts if that's the route you want to go, or you can go with a kit. I did make a video comparing my self-sourced V0.1 versus my LDO V0.1, and I think that video does a great job highlighting some of the sort of pros versus cons of going the self-source versus kit route, and I'll have that linked in the description if that's something you're interested in. Going with the kit, you know that you'll have all the parts that you need, and it will save you some serious time, especially on things like wiring, where it comes with a very nice wiring harness instead of you having to crimp all of the cable ends yourself. The LDO kit comes with quite a few extras like higher quality cable chains, making routing the cables much easier, a hard K influenced tool head PCB, an input shaper tool, and WAGOs to make wiring much easier. So how was the build? As mentioned, every single part of this with the exception of the enclosure was built on stream over on the Modbot Army channel. Not dealing with the tiny extrusions of the V0.1 or having to remember to preload all of the nuts was very nice and it made it where if you accidentally forgot to do something, backtracking was much more forgiving. 
Just like with the V0.1, I printed out one of the hardware organizers I designed, which is something I highly recommend to anyone building a Voron or any printer kit, whether it's that, but organizing your hardware will save you so much time and frustration. Overall, the build went fairly smoothly, but I did run into a couple of hiccups. The first was with the clockwork extruder. Before we started at any of the streams, I had printed out all the parts and checked them off of a spreadsheet that I had created for myself. And to get those STLs, I went over to the Voron Design website, clicked on the switch wire, and under the STLs, downloaded the zip file. What I did not realize was that those STLs were from an earlier version of the switch wire, and some of the items have changed, and some of the items have changed quite a bit. For a lot of the parts, it wasn't really a big deal, and I did notice it early on with the cable chain mounting printed parts that it just looked quite different than what was in the PDF, but I was still able to use them and it wasn't really problematic until I got to the clockwork. Once I got to the clockwork, all the parts that I had printed out, which were from the older clockwork design, did not align with the parts I needed to print out from the LDO's supplementary print guide, so the two parts could not mesh together. And it took me a little bit of time to figure out what was going on and the end solution was that I basically stopped the stream at that point and went back and had to print out all of the newer or the correct parts for the clockwork. The major lesson learned here is that from now on, whether it's a Voron build or whether it's any other printer build, I'm going directly to the GitHub to make sure I get the latest STLs if there have been any changes that have been made. After that, the rest of the build went fairly smooth. I got the printer assembled, I installed Clipper and had everything running at least correctly. And it was at that point I decided I needed to install the enclosure and I realized that there was no guide in the PDF on how to install this enclosure. I'm sure just by looking at pictures or maybe some sort of CAD, I could have figured it out, but being that a lot of these components are stuck together with VHB tape, I didn't want to stick anything together incorrectly and then later on have to try to remove it. This is where Steve Build's stream came into clutch. Uh, on his stream, he covers the entire process of installing this enclosure, which I followed to a T. He also had some awesome tips. Basically, he used some thin pieces of tape to hold all the acrylic panels together while he was then placing the printed parts, which was something that was much nicer than trying to juggle everything together. And then he also designed a pretty simple spacer that made it where when you were attaching the inner parts of the ACM panels, you had a little bit of space so that way the VHB tape wouldn't cause the panels to stick out. That was life-saving and I will have links in the description over here to his stream or his stream playlist for that because there are just some very, very awesome tips and I, it would have taken me so much longer guessing on these panels had I not found the Steve Build stream on the Voron switch wire. Right after the build, I started printing with the switch wire, primarily an ABS, but an occasional PETG part here and there. And overall, I was really happy with the quality I was getting off this printer. There are not any profiles built into Super Slicer for the switch wire, like there are a lot of the other Vorons. So what I ended up doing was Googling around a bit, I found a other switch wire profile somewhere, and I used that as sort of a reference that I then made some tweaks from. Unlike the other Voron printers that don't require mesh bed leveling, the switch wire does require mesh bed leveling, and that is where I ran into some issues. The inductive probe was giving me some inconsistent results, and this only amplified when I was printing with ABS and having the entire enclosure heat up. I was still able to print and get good results, but I wasn't able to take full advantage of the entire bed. I had to use smaller segments of the bed, otherwise I would just have really uneven and inconsistent leveling. So based on the feedback from my buddies DC Sublime and G Funny, I started to look into some form of a clicky probe or physical probe style option. The difficult thing of the switch wire compared to the other Core XY Vorons is that you don't have the ability to get the tool head off of the build plate. And so all the solutions that I found out there did have some sort of a clicky probe, but the sacrifice you were making is that you were losing say 20, 30, 40 millimeters of build volume in some instances, which isn't something I really wanted to do. Then one of my awesome stream viewers, Nice3D, sent me a link to a GitHub repository for a clicky style probe for the switch wire called the Mag Probe. And the Mag Probe did use a clicky probe, but it also used a servo. So that way the docking station could go out when it needed to be grabbed and then put itself away so you weren't losing that build volume. I installed this two weeks ago and not only does it look awesome, but I could not be happier. I'm getting much more consistent meshes and I'm able to print way bigger parts than I was able to print before I did this mod. 
The official Clicky mod actually released a version for the Switchfire as well that I didn't see until I was well into the process of getting ready to install this, but it looks pretty awesome and the Clicky uh, docking station lives on the X carriage, which definitely has some benefits and simplifies the install process a little bit more than the version I went with. Based on input shaper and my acceleration tests, I currently have the acceleration on the switch wire set to 4,000. And for the most part, I'm printing at about 150 millimeters per second with sometimes a little bit more. This is by no means the cap of what I would say this machine can do, but my goal is to have a printer that could print ABS well and fairly quickly, but consistency and reliability is really more what I was going for with this than just a sheer speed demon. The Switchfire is an awesome printer that is very capable and I am really looking forward to putting many, many more print hours on this machine. When talking to others, if I ever do hear a complaint about the V0.1 or the Voron Zero, it's typically related to its build size. And for me, the build size is actually perfect for a lot of the functional printing and parts that I do, but I understand that it's not ideal for everyone. And the Switchwire is a really nice step up that gives you a lot more build volume. You can get a kit for under $900, which will definitely save you some money versus going with something like the Trident or the 2.4. The only real upgrades I had planned for the Switchwire is installing the Stealth Burner with the Clockwork 2 because I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about it and I really like the lights and I like the status LED. It just looks like an awesome tool head and the uh, increased cooling is also a huge plus. I might swap out the screen on the front for a 4.3 inch touchscreen running clipper screen and then I'm also in the process of finalizing the printed parts for the ERCF or the Enraged Cab enraged rabbit carrot feeder, and that's something that I plan on installing on the Switchwire as well. The printer is solid, and whether you go with a straight up build of the Switchwire or you do something like one of the Ender 3 to Switchwire mods that exist out there, you will not be disappointed. And that has been the Voron Switchwire. It has been quite a journey with this printer over the last couple of months. It's moved a thousand miles with me. It took a beating in the move and I actually had to replace a couple parts, but it's been such a fun printer. I'm really happy to have it in such a good place now and plan on cranking out just a ton of parts. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions you may have had about the Voron Switchwire, maybe convinced you to give it a go. Uh, if there are any questions that you have that I maybe didn't answer, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!